So today we are exploring Akutong. Let's go. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Anna and today I'm carrying out with my neighborhood videos of Seoul and we're talking about Apgudong today. I'm sitting outside in this cafe called From Harris and I am waiting for the freaking London Bagel Museum for my spot because there are 215 teams before me. Is it really that good? I would never wait that long for any restaurant or cafe. I'm doing this for the video, I'm doing this for you guys so I'm gonna show you that later on. There's no one else out on the terrace right now. Hi guys. <laughs> That's what you call a yone inta, celebrity man. Who's in there? I wonder who's there. So Apgu is situated in the district of upscale Gangnam and the area was developed into a residential area in the 1970s and it became one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in South Korea. You'll find many high-end luxury shops, cafes, restaurants, lounges, clubs and many plastic surgery clinics in this area. And Apgu Rodeo is actually named after Rodeo Drive, Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. Korea's first ever McDonald's was opened here in 1988 and all the big entertainment companies used to have their main offices around this area but then they all moved elsewhere. In the 1990s there was a new culture growing among the young people in their 20s and these young kids they were referred to as the Orange Tribe. These people basically like to partake in flex culture. They wore luxury brand clothing, they drove foreign cars and this was all financed by the generous pocket money given to them by their parents. I was watching some videos of the said Orange Tribe back in the day and they were asking how much pocket money do you get per month and they were saying back to sabek I'll put the equivalent of what that would be in today's economy and it's a lot and it's not even like their wages but it's just their pocket money International travel became available to Koreans from 1989. So these wealthy students who were able to study in places like California, for example, they would come back to Korea for the holidays and then they would roam the streets of Apgujang. They would bring back this Western culture that they had picked up, including the fashion, the way they talk, the way they walk around. And so they were a bit more free, slightly less modest than the average humble Korean back in the day. And also citrus fruits like oranges were really precious because they all were imported from overseas. And since places like California, Orange County is known for for the oranges. So it's like a symbol of these wealthy kids with not much going on but just had loads of money to spend. They were called the orange tribe. There's also a saying that these guys would just like carry around oranges and if they saw a girl on the street that they liked they would just like give one to her as like a pickup thing. I don't know how true that is but I think that's just kind of like a fun theory. So these orange tribe kids they were kind of looked down upon by the rest of Korean society because obviously the parents generation they had survived through like the devastating Korean war and everyone was trying to pick up the pieces and then these kids they were just enjoying the fruits of their parents labor and this obviously created some deep feelings of hatred and envy between the lower class and like these upper class kids there were even some murder cases in 1994 where there was a gang they were trying to kidnap and kill these rich orange tribe kids <laughs> Korea back in the 80s, there used to be restrictions on how short or long you could have your hair. You couldn't dye it many colors. Obviously, these kids that had just come from abroad, they were wearing dreads, do rags, they were bleaching their hair blonde, and all this kind of stuff. So they looked very free. There were even some establishments that were like, we will not accept orange tribe people. There was like a poster saying, people driving around in foreign cars cannot come in. Men with man buns, earrings, piercings cannot come in. People speaking Korean, but in a deliberately not good way. Annyeonghaseyo, and like this kind of stuff. Aside from the orange tribe people, there was also another group and they used to be called the Yatta group. And these were basically guys driving around in expensive cars. They would like see girls on the street that they would like. They would drive up to them, blasting music, and they would just open the windows and just say Yatta, which means like, hey, get in. And then these girls, if they wanted to go with the guys, they would just get in the car and just like drive off with them. And this would like lead to one night stands and this kind of thing. So Apgujang was at its most popping in the 90s, but then in the 2000s, due to gentrification, it pushed many of the independent 
independent shop owners to just be pushed out and the nearby Karasuki actually became more popular and so loads of businesses just shut down here and then Akujang started to become a hot place again during COVID time the first big COVID spread happened in Itaewon and after that nobody really wanted to party in Itaewon anymore and so everyone kind of started coming over to Akujang instead and that's the time when a lot of lounge bars opened up and now Akujang is probably one of the most happening most busiest places especially at the weekends and actually I find that a lot of people like me either Kyopos or people who have studied abroad we all kind of hang around in Akujang a lot you'll hear a lot of English being spoken on the streets actually also I must say like the people in Akujang are usually the best looking <laughs> Guys and girls, you'll see a lot of models, influencers, celebrities walking around here. So if I give you a list of my favorite establishments that I like to go to a lot. For my hair, I go to a hair salon called Halum. One of my influencer friends, Freya, she introduced me to the hair salon. I've been going there ever since. And also, if I'm not mistaken, if you guys watch Physical 100, Tarzan from that show, he also gets his hair done at home. She does my hair the way I like it and she cuts my bangs really nice. So that's why I go. Your best chances of seeing rappers and maybe other celebrities are at clubs and lounges. So the lounge that I have been to the most is called Times. It's not too big, it's kind of actually really small and it just gets packed. My favorite DJ, brilliant on the beat, he plays at Times a lot, which is why I go actually. It's mostly hip hop and kind of house influenced and Jay Park has performed there. Vita, that's another hip hop club. I saw Jay Park there too. Snack, Orgasm Valley, interesting name. I generally prefer hip hop music to EDM or techno. This kind of thing so those are the ones that i like other honorable bars b chord and rpm rpm is famous for girls flocking there because the guys that own that shop they're like meant to be models so you'll see good looking people behind the bar and like good looking waiters and stuff so <laughs> try it out there's a lot of pochas recently in apgujang famous one called seo gongjang which is actually right next to times this is a very popular pocha at night it's full of people and this is actually right next to oh hi do you know who I am? <laughs> yeah, you popped up high. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm pep. You popped up on my like YouTube page. Oh like, my gosh. Do you live channels. here or are you no, visiting? No, I'm visiting. Where, where are you so from? I actually did use your channel to try find Oh my god, you're joking. Where have you been you. so far? Yesterday I got my nails done at this place I called Tan Nails. Oh my god. I was like, oh I think that's her. Oh my god, so pretty. I love yeah, that. So like she... Korea can only do like yes. this kind of level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So another celebrity sighting hotspot is a place called Ten Corso Como Cafe which is an Italian luxury boutique shop and they also have a cafe in the downstairs. It is bougie AF and the cafe is kind of like private table kind of vibe. You know who I saw there? I saw Song hye -kyo. If you guys watch The Glory on Netflix, she's the main actress in that. This is like back in 2013 or something. I was with a friend and I was like having coffee and then she walked in with her manager and like some entourage. Firstly, I didn't recognize her but then I just kind of kept glancing dancing at this lady who had like no makeup on her face but she was so beautiful and I was like who is this stunning person so that's why I kept looking over there I kept staring and I realized like oh my god it's Song Yegyo but honest to god guys I've never seen a more prettier person ever in my life I think she looks a million times better in person than now she does on camera so but yeah go in there for like a very overpriced coffee if you want to try and maybe see a celebrity Galleria department store that's on the main Apgujang Rodeo road that's like filled with bougie as designer shops and stuff so I've come to like the food deli section and they have all sorts of fresh groceries and you can get food that's like ready to go ready to eat if you come to Apgujang area and you come to the Galleria department store make sure you go downstairs to the basement and you'll find this whole other world of foods and snacks definitely it's a must check out place also, there's a place called Claro and Blanc and Eclair, which is by Jessica of X Girls Generation. She has her own fine dining restaurant and plus her Blanc and Eclair clothing brand. I've never been in there, but if you're a fan, if you want to check it out, go wander close to it. Gentle Monster, the Korean sunglass brand that Jenny is the model for. And in the Gentle Monster store, in the downstairs, they have the really famous bakery called New Dake. And they have the most innovative, most delicious bakeries and cakes and all that. Go check it out. That's like a must. I'm waiting in line for London Bagel Museum. I'm currently 142nd in line. <laughs> Yay! One hour later. Oh my gosh, I'm finally here. I'm just leaving my bag because this is Korean. I'm gonna go get bagels. <laughs> Sold out by the evening, so. 
two. This is like one of the best sellers. It's called the Pringling Bagel. Apparently you dip it into the honey. And then the other one I got is the Jambon Bear Sandwich Bagel. So I don't like these massive slabs of butter. That makes me feel a bit sick, so I'm gonna take that out. How can people just eat like slabs of butter? I like the mustard that's in there, it's good mustard, but I waited two hours for this. The taste is not worth waiting two hours for. And like for me, I tasted the best bagels you can get in New York and like this does not compare. It's, it's fine, but it's not worth waiting two hours for. Don't do that to yourself. Let's try the other one. How much do I spend on this? This one, I really don't understand why this is the best seller. What is special about this? Nothing. I am so, so disappointed in this. It's so overhyped. I cannot believe I had to wait two hours for this. Never again am I doing this. But there are other honorable mentions such as Sadler House. They're famous for their croffles. Mamma Mia, which is like the very iconic Instagram pink brick cafe. I've never been inside, but they look like they have like really nice desserts in there. A place called Mooney Cafe. That's also like a very Instagram hotspot right now. The outside terrace looks so beautiful. Oh, they look so good. Guys, I'm at Cafe Mooney and I just ran into someone else. <laughs> Where are you from? Texas. Texas. <laughs> she said she saw me on YouTube yesterday. <laughs> when did you come to Seoul? Monday. Have you had fun so far? Oh, I love this too. Love it. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> My videos are actually being watched by people around the world. I think that makes me feel quite like like happy, really happy actually. But look at this. Is this just like a random ice? An espresso ice. Victoria sponge is my favorite cake. Let's see if the desserts are any good or if it's gonna be a disappointment like the bagel place. It's slightly on the stale side. The taste of the cream and everything is good. Is it the best Victoria sponge I've ever had? Probably no, but it's certainly not bad. I would rate this higher than the bagel I had earlier, so. I have these bougie -ass strawberries. Mm. I'm a strawberry queen too, I love strawberries. <laughs> but aside from this, there are so many other desserts you can try here. And you must come here for the Instagram photos. Okay, I have to attend a Zoom meeting now, so that's what I'm doing. Sorry, one question? No. Do you speak English? Yeah. Are you reviewing uh, cafes and stuff? Yeah. Okay, can I give you a recommendation? Okay. I've been there today in the morning. It was like... Sure, no. so, did, you, did you like the... the it's one? okay, it's okay. It's not the, the best, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Where are you from? France? No, Austria. Austria, okay. Where are you from? I'm Korean. I live oh, okay, here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This one? Cheong Sudang Gallery? Cheong Sudang, I've been there. Ah. I've been there. <laughs> ah, okay, then... then yeah, it's a good one. We are going back home tomorrow. Mm. Oh, I'm a YouTuber actually. Say hi to my. <laughs> How much subscribers? Well, subscribe. Ah, <laughs> ah, this way. Uh, got my name is Anna Lee. Yeah, I make okay, videos yeah? about Korea. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's crazy. Say I bye to my channel. Yeah, hi friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Enjoy your last night. You too. Yeah. Thank bye. You. Bye bye. Star Road. I know it's really famous, but like for me, this is like way too touristy for me to come. I never come here. So it's like way too touristy for me to come. I never come here. So walk out of Apgudong Rodeo, exit two, and you'll find the K Star Road. I actually saw Shiny like probably 10 years ago, but they were at some like fashion event. I actually saw Tongyan and Minwoo, I think. But these have not been updated in a while, I don't think. There's like no fourth gen idols. They're really old. Yeah, this is like Miss A. It's like a second gen K-pop. It's really outdated. Where's BTS? The only one I care about. Found it. It's quite far in. So at least walk up to the Cartier building right here. And BTS is right here. So there you go. I'm at this bar called Mr. Simon. I've heard that this is the oldest running whiskey bar that opened in, so I'm waiting for my friend to come. So I'm gonna have one glass of whiskey. Let's go in. You get menu, eh, Yasazan? Really? Oh.
I'm really a beginner, I'm a noob, I'm trying to learn the smells and appreciate it. I think I'm getting like apple. Boyfriend's obsessed. He told me about spring break. I really like it. No, I don't want to be in the video, man. Oh, just film me. <laughs> Chris. Down in the upper toilet resort. Two girls recognize me. One's from LA, What's one's cute? from Texas. That's not cute. Cute. Not cute. Don't, don't talk to me about Rodea comes to life in the night time. I've come to like a pucha. This is, oh my god, plush kepad. <laughs> this place is usually popping and full of people on a Friday night, Saturday night. This is like meaty pancake. Where, where? Everything's a content. Of course. Everything. I don't go out unless it's like for content purposes. <laughs> Nalva! Thank you for the plug! He asked me what my rooms are from. It's pretty! It's from Toto, it's from Nalva. It's available shipping worldwide, you guys. I hope you guys enjoy me exploring Apujang today. I'll come back with more Seoul neighborhood videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!